What Unsolved Mystery Gives You the Creeps? Part 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow if you enjoy the video. Account 1. Story I've told for years. A friend of a friend went backpacking by himself in the Rockies with a camera. After the trip, when he developed the pictures, there was a picture of himself sleeping. I've seen the picture, and I'm pretty sure his story has been published in magazine articles. Gives me the creeps every time I think about it. Account 2. Andrew Gosden. The boy simply left his house, withdraw $200 from a bank account, took a one-way ticket to London, and simply vanished. It is especially weird since he never skipped school. He had 100% attendance there. Also, it seemed he went to London to watch a concert from a band he was a big fan. Also, he didn't took an electronic charger for his PSP, which suggests that he probably didn't expect to be gone for too long. My personal theory is that he met some creepy guy online or in person who probably used his love for the band to lure him to London, probably said something like, don't worry about a return ticket, I will take you back home. Account 3. The Devil's Footprints. All over England, one snowy morning, hundreds of miles of hoof prints appeared in the snow. What was unusual was not only how far and wide the reports were, but where the prints went. Across open fields and over rooftops, taking a straight path through everything where it would be impossible for an animal to make them, still hasn't been completely explained. Account 4. Back in 1998, I lived in a farm. I was tenyo. My parents and I were building our house in the, the city, so on weekends we would go and paint and fix the place. On the way back, we had to go to the farm, and we passed through an R that is open. No tree. Nothing else but a windmill pulling water. Out of the blue, a massive white light blinds everyone in my family. We were in a Ford F-100 single cabin truck, the four of us facing the windshield. The burst of light was followed by a high-pitched noise. My father had to stop and pull over. It was the middle of the night in a rural open area, nothing around us. We heard some noises above the truck, and my father said, Fuck no, and hit the gas. The next weekend on our way back, we slash a tire in the exact same spot the white light blinded us and the sound. I have never seen my father scared in his life. We started to hear the high pitch sound. My father got off and changed the tire with Formula One NASCAR speed and hit the gas ASAP. Aunt brother and I were just terrified as my mother was also out holding the light for him. We were scared of. On top of that, the same night our TV and the farm only managed to get a few channels. We saw a real-life footage of a family being kidnapped by aliens during Thanksgiving, and we freaked out. Up to this day, my family has no clue what was that sound nor the light, but boy, we remember the fear. Account 5. Disappearance of Lars Mittank. People disappearing isn't that weird, but whatever compelled his guy to sprint out of an airport terminal, over a barbed wire fence, and into the woods to never be seen, no credible sightings even again, is spooky. No history of mental illness. Edit, no mental illness, but he did suffer head trauma right before the incident after getting into a fight. Wasn't allowed to fly home because of a ruptured eardrum, so he stayed behind while all his friends flew home. His family received paranoid calls from him where he claimed someone was following him. Surveillance cameras show him walking normally to the airport once he was allowed to fly again, but fleeing for no apparent reason afterward. It's possible the head trauma was much worse than thought and he suffered paranoid delusions because of it. Account 6. Disappearance of Chiron Horman. Chiron Richard Horman, born September 9, 2002, is an American boy who disappeared from Skyline Elementary School in Portland, Oregon, on June 4, 2010, after attending a science fair. Local and state police, along with the FBI, conducted an exhaustive search and launched a criminal investigation, but have not uncovered any significant information regarding the child's whereabouts. Horman's disappearance sparked the largest criminal investigation in Oregon history. To this day, his whereabouts remain unknown. Account 7. Disappearance of Prime Ministers. Harold Edward Holt. I haven't seen this one yet, so forgive me if it's come up. But here in Australia, one of our prime ministers mysteriously went missing without a trace in 1967 while spearfishing off the East Coast. 
probably doesn't sound too sinister, but the fact his body was never found and there are conspiracies surrounding his disappearance makes it a little more interesting, to me and a loot of Aussies at least. Account 8. The death of Elisa Lamb. She was reported as missing, and the hotel that housed her during her vacation, the Cecil, had found some security footage of her. She was in an elevator peeking out and acting scared, and she frantically pressed all the buttons she could, but the doors would not close. She walked out, and the second she did, the doors closed. It could have been a slow elevator, but if so, that takes the cake for the slowest elevator close time ever. Her body was found in a reservoir at the hotel after people had complained about the quality of water they were drinking. Turns out her body was decaying and mixing with the water, if I remember correctly. The creepiest thing is probably that the water reservoir she was in was locked from the outside, and there is only one key in existence, and the manager or janitor, I forget, had the key with him the entire fucking time. I'm from Vancouver where she was from, and I remember it being a very covered local story. Another creepy thing is that the Cecil Hotel also housed the infamous Night Stalker serial killer. Don't stay at the Cecil. Fuck that place. Account 9. Susan Powell's case always gives me the heebie-jeebies, but mostly cause it happened so close to where I live. Basically, in 2009, Susan Powell went missing. It's noticed that she, her husband, and her two sons are missing the next day when no one shows up to work daycare. Family starts trying to contact them to no avail. Finally, a sister gets a hold of the husband, Josh. He said he went on a spontaneous camping trip with the kids, on a school night, in November, and now he didn't know where Susan was. There's a lot of shady details. A fan drying a wet spot in his house. Some blood found in his house. He and his family tried to say Susan was having an affair. She ran away with her suitor. The kids say they had seen mommy in a trunk. Susan's friends say she had become afraid. A journal of hers they found said she had moved to Utah from Washington because Josh's dad scared her. She had told friends that Josh and his dad wanted to share Susan. Authorities later found hundreds of photos on Josh's dad's computer of Susan that she didn't know were being taken. I know what you are thinking. Josh killer her. Or his dad did. It seems clear cut. But because of some flubs in the initial investigation, despite all the suspicions, no one could get any real evidence. And more importantly, no one ever found Susan or her body. The case stagnated. A few years later, Josh's dad was arrested for having child pornography on his computer. In 2012, after Josh had moved back to Washington, he exploded his house during a supervised visit with his sons. Investigation of the remains showed that Josh had locked himself in the house with the boys, hacked them up with an axe, before they all expired from smoke inhalation. The next year, Josh's brother also committed suicide. And now, Josh's dad, who many believe knows exactly where Susan's body is, if he wasn't involved with her murder himself, is out of prison and walking this world. It's been nearly eight years since her disappearance. And still, we are no closer to finding her body. This case haunts me because all signs point to Susan, a victim of abuse, murdered by her husband who would later go on to kill their children and himself. But we have no solid proof and no body. Edit. Type this up from mine so I'm sure I got a few things wrong. Account 10. Isdalsk Vinen and Kambomanen, two murder cases in Norway that happened around the 70s where they found the victims burned, bruised far into the wilderness. All brand tags were removed from their clothing, and there was no way to identify the bodies. None matching their outlook was ever reported missing, and upon further police investigations, it was believed that they were spies during the Cold War. Both cases gets weirder, the more you study them, and Norwegian police officials are still, to this day, asking for tips that could help identify the victims. Account 11. I was sitting on a picnic table in our apartment complex courtyard one night with some neighbors. We were drinking and one fellow, Scott, had a bit too much and fell asleep. It was a mild night and we were all in our early 20s, so we thought nothing of leaving him out there as we went back to our apartments. His place was no more than 15 feet away from where he slumbered in a well-lit area. In the morning, I saw that the table was empty, so I went over and knocked on my neighbor's door, check on Scott's hangover. Thing is, his roommates say he never came home. 
I'm mildly concerned, but once again, we're all young and don't worry too much. Around noon, he comes staggering across the courtyard in his boxers and nothing else. We left him fully clothed. He explains that he just woke up in a sparsely furnished apartment across the complex. His only memory of the last night is someone waking him up and walking him to the unknown location, where the shadowy person crawled in the window and then let him in the front door. Everyone is busy making jokes, but this is gnawing at me, so I demand that we go explore. When we get to the apartment, the door is unlocked. After knocking for a few minutes, we walk in. There are condiments in the fridge, but no real food. There's a poster on the wall for the band 311 and a few folding chairs, but no furniture or TV. The bathroom is similar with a half-squeezed tube of toothpaste, but no shower curtain or bath mat. Curiouser and curiouser. Finally, the bedroom, which had no bed, but did have a row of dolls against the wall. There's also a pillow and blanket on the floor and Scott's clothes neatly folded at the foot of this makeshift cot. We grabbed his clothes. He had declined to join us, preferring to simply point out the apartment and return to his place and get out of there. Scott is adamant that the clothes were not there when he woke up, which I believe. Sure, he was terribly hungover, but not so much though that he wasn't aware of his surroundings and he would have had to literally step over these clothes to leave the room. Nobody else seemed to care about this event. My roommates, his roommates, and even Scott himself just seemed content to drop this, but it's been over 15 years and it still gnaws at me. No money was taken. He didn't have a cell phone to begin with. He said he had no memory of the person, but assumes it was a male since they basically carried him to that apartment. Why? If you're concerned about the drunk boy in the courtyard, why take him to a random apartment? Did that person live there? If so, why did they crawl in the window? Scott said he had to unlock the bolt when he left, so I guess that person also left through the window, but why? Why take his clothes off and where were they when he woke up? I asked him to smell his clothes to see if they'd been washed, but he never got back to me on that. He basically waved it off as a weird night. I will never solve this mystery. It haunts me. Account 12. In the city I live in, around mid-2008, there was a murder case that happened involved. A 14-year-old girl was murdered, along with her house help. Various theories emerged including one very prominent one where her own parents committed the crime. They were even implicated in it. They were only recently given bail, and to this day, nobody knows who killed her. Her name was Arushi Talwar. It was something that really shook the country. Account 13. There's a small town next to where I live where a little girl named Cherry Mayan disappeared. She got off at her bus stop one evening after school and vanished. No one is really sure what happened to her to this day. We have a rather long trail system running through that town and few others, so the description I read of her and her clothing is always in my mind and has always had me on the lookout while I'm out rummaging around through the forest. There is also a very remote spot where there are at least 100,000 bullet and shell casings on the ground. There are so many that they cover the ground floor for 25 yards, and when you reach down and grab a handful of debris beneath your feet, all you get is a handful of casings. I have a video I can upload of it if anyone should be interested. Account 14. The disappearance of Frederick Valentich, an Australian pilot who was flying from Melbourne who disappeared without a trace. He reported that a giant metal circular object was hovering above his plane, and air traffic control told him there was no other traffic on that route. Radio cuts out after a loud metal screeching sound, and he was never seen again. The Australian government scrapped the documents of the event and the radio recording after it was accidentally aired on public radio. They told Frederick's father that they will allow him to see his son's body on the basis that he never tells anyone about what happened. And the media made up a fake story that the guy was obsessed with aliens, thus taking away his credibility for what he reported. Account 15. It has since been solved, mostly, but the bloop noise always gave me the creeps. Even the mental image of a sea creature so massive that it can be heard from sonar stations hundreds to thousands of miles apart freaks me out deep within. Imagine being underwater, where you have limited visibility, and a creature approaches you that is so massive you can't see its entirety. You look left, endless creature. You look right up and down to the same thing. Some freakish creature that engulfs your entire field of vision. Yikes. <laughs>